it's a pleasure to be here today with Kent Larson from Bridgeport National Bindery. So Kent, tell us a little bit about the types of clients and applications you produce at your print facility. Great, yeah. Bridgeport National Bindery, uh, we're a company that makes books, uh, mainly hardcover books, and our clientele is it's publishers, uh, mainstream publishers, traditional publishers who have dabbled in the short run, um, but it's also a lot of online companies who are portals to be able to do, do it yourself. Uh, self-publishing. Self-publishing, exactly. And so our niche, our, our market has always been in a, in a book of one environment, small run, short run, and that, that market has been really on the periphery for a couple of decades, yeah. and um, clearly now it's becoming more mainstream, and people meeting publishers or IT companies, uh, online companies, are figuring out there are new opportunities, and there are a lot more. There's a lot more variety to do to get your book produced sure. um, with with many different uh, substrates and different types of bindings. Great. And so that's where we live. So, uh, what what is your current inkjet investment? What, what type of inkjet devices are you running? We have we have two inkjets. Uh, our inkjet platform. We have an HP and a Screen. And both of which are dynamic, both of which are, are performing uh, very, very well, and they allow us to, 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 to get a lot, a lot more production. And so the capacity has been great for us. Because we're a book of one, mm -hmm. uh, short run, yep. uh, we've got to be able to use our software and impose these files so that they're running efficiently. So both presses that we are operating are great in terms of quality, but also great in terms of the software, mm -hmm. uh, so that we're able to run and we go roll to roll and then we, uh, we take the role and, and off, uh, offline it to book blocks and then distribute the book blocks um, to different binding styles, hardcover, softcover, coil, um, and that's where, we, that's where we, we live day in and day out. In finishing. Yes, yes, it is finishing. Um, you know, we're a binder uh, first. That's our heritage and our roots, doing one book at a time for libraries. And a few decades ago, we moved back up the production chain and got into printing. And just because you're a printer doesn't mean you know everything about printing, <laughs> especially when your name has bindery in it. Mm -hmm. So we've learned so much from colleagues and friends mm -hmm. uh, who have shared their best practices with us, and we hopefully have returned the favor by sharing our best practices with them because our, uh, the world of publishing is, is, is going to continue to go further and further into customization yeah. and inventory-free because, to me, the biggest thing with what we do in publishing for product production um, is it's driving out um, the real necessity to inventory or ship um, what you don't need to ship, where you need to ship. So for the sake of uh, environmental purposes, you're really reducing that, you know, that footprint in the, in the carbon space. So we really love the idea of using technology with inkjet presses to drive cost and productivity. So as you look at new investments in both hardware, software, and finishing, what's driving your decision criteria? Automation. And all, what are you hoping all, to accomplish? All about automation. Um, we're trying to drive uh, productivity, speed. Um, time is a huge commodity, mm -hmm. as uh, anyone would ever, <laughs> anyone's ever bought anything, they just want it quick. We're an instant society. So what's interesting for us and how we've looked at it is, you know, what, 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 the audio did to the to the world yep. of iTunes and Napster <laughs> legally at the beginning, and then eventually what what has gone on in the streaming world. Yes. Books are different. You have to take the digital out of digital and put it into print, and then get it distributed. So that automation feat part is what will drive our book of one forward. And we have to aggregate things the best way we can, and then produce. So whatever we can do with technology, software, and all of these uh, equipment companies here at the show are really, um, it's been amazing how in just a few short years it's turned into a real product of, of books. And so we're seeing the automation develop much quicker than we thought. That's, that's exciting. So what challenges do you see in your shop when you bring in new technology? So you've got two different inkjet platforms. I'm sure you're looking at other yeah, finishing yeah. and solutions. What challenges ha occur? So the challenges is uptime, making sure that the uptime uh, is there, which again, the, the equipment companies have been really good at developing new equipment that has good uptime. Yep. Um, but it's also workflow yep. and getting, okay, do you go inline? Do you go offline? How, how diversified do you need to get? It would be great to just buy one long kit like it's a Dr. Seuss machine. You put in a book here, it comes out the other end. 
But it doesn't work that you way. You can't do that, <laughs> or unless you have like one customer that wants to send you a gazillion books. Um, it just doesn't work that way. So you've got to innovate and work around the, um, the, the, you know, the least common denominator and develop your workflow that way. And so for us, it's putting in new equipment and then being able to adapt our workflow to to maximize the what I said earlier about the efficiency, uh, automation, and time uh, to get it to market quick and you know throw in quality too because we are known for quality and we, we need to make sure that what we're making is a very very good product because it's not just going to someone who bought a book it's going to the person who made the book and they have a they have a pretty high demand of what they want it to look like and be of course yeah so when you look at like your partnership with screen what beyond technology what else do they provide you that's been a benefit to your firm oh man um there's there there are really two areas that have made the relationship with screen um, a really great one for us is they've been very attentive to questions. Uh, when we're kind of in that world of innovating, in some ways I've told our, our people who work with us that we kind of are a laboratory and sometimes you make things up as you go along. You need people to be able to respond to that when you ask them questions or you say, what if we did it this way? Could you, could you perhaps look at the code and program something? And so they've been receptive to that. They're very agile. Um, helping, helping respond to the questions that we have. And the second thing, and, and it sounds so basic, and it sounds so um, something that we should know, but their maintenance, the way that they're taking care of the press, that we do a monthly PM, the uptime has been phenomenal. And we really appreciate that, that, that value, that we are, we are purposely keeping this press in great shape. Um, because it's at the end of the day, it's a huge investment, and we know that they see, they know that we know it's an investment, so they take care of the maintenance really, really well. Great. So yeah. Well, thank you, and I, I wish you well on your journey for automation well, and Thanks. uptime. Enjoy Appreciate the rest it. of the show. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. you.